my understanding of ancestors, I think, is a good place for us to start. Um, and generally, you know, we all have our parents and then our grandparents and our family lineage going right the way back. And we would tend to see that as our ancestors. So as in our forefathers or the people we came from. Um, but ancestors is a bit more than that because they're also those ancestors who, the people who are buried in the soil that we live on, you know? So there were people in any place where we live, there were people living there before. And everything that grows in that soil grows out of, we could say out of their bones or out of um, the remains of, of their bodies and their life. And so they also affect us and they become our ancestors. And then there, you know, we, we're not just human beings. We, we live in community with everybody else, everything else which uh, inhabits this planet, planet with us, be that uh, animals, birds, insects, fishes, reptiles, plants, um, even the mountains and the rivers. And each of these things which we live with now has its ancestors. So there were those of, of, the, of them which came before. Uh, they they all came from somewhere. So when we talk about ancestors, and my understanding of ancestors is not just our grandparents and our great grandparents, but it's all ancestors. Um, and so when we look at what what it is about communities who or, or cultures who work with ancestors or venerate ancestors, there tends to be an understanding that you know we inhabit a physical body for a certain amount of years. But then there's a previous life that we've had before we are part of a physical body. And then there's a life that we go into after we're part of a physical body. Um, and that life is as rich and as full as the life that we have while we have a physical body. So here in, in Southern Africa, the understanding is that the ancestors, are they continue to be in community with us and we continue to be in community with them. And they continue to interact with us on a day-to-day -day, uh, way. And really, for us to be completely in community, we should be interacting with them in a day-to-day -day way. Um, so that's my understanding of ancestors generally. Ancestral healing is where we go the step ahead of that. And we, we go into looking at community and what it means to be in community. And And, you know, fundamentally the way i see it we, we're primates you know science tell us we're part of the primate uh, family of things um, and as primates we live in troops and we rely on the rest of our troop for our survival and that goes from simply things like protection um, uh, being able to um, to push away aggressors or something like that on a, a very basic level right down to the fact that we groom each other and we we stroke each other we love each other we cuddle each other and as primates those things are fundamental to us so as troop creatures if we're not in a good community we suffer you know we we, we suffer from ill health and that might be on a physical level or on a mental level on an emotional level so this thing of ancestors is that they're part of our community who I think in the sort of industrial paradigm, we tend to neglect it a lot. We say, okay, the dead are the dead and they're gone. They're no longer there. And we should be moving forward and leaving all that alone. But in a way that we, we're then, we're neglecting a huge part of our community and we're out of community with a huge section of who we actually are. So ancestral healing for me very often is that thing of, coming back into community where we've lost community or coming back into uh, a harmonious sense of community where where we're in a non-harmonious sense of community which a lot of us are and, and it's part of life you know even with those who are living we're in dispute often and uh, there's tension and there's conflict and there's those things and those things are healthy except when they start to sever relationships and we start to find ourselves isolated and scattered and people excluded. And then as a community, we're not cohesive anymore. Then we start finding ourselves susceptible to depression, um, mental illness, um, physical illness, and all of this. So, so I see that the, the job of ancestral healing is actually is community work. It's not more than that.
So yes, I've been working in this field for 30 something years. Um, and I have a practice where people come to see me on an individual level. But you know, nobody's an individual. And each time a person comes and they say, okay, well, I've got some difficulty and uh, can we look into it? It's kind of the first question is, okay, so where are your relatives and how are you with your relatives? And, uh, you know, in the olden days in Botswana where I, I learned uh, this work, um, if uh, a person went to see a traditional healer, they would say, well, well why do you come alone? Uh, where are your relatives? And that's always the first sign of there being a problem if you don't come with other people. Um, if you're sneaking around going to see traditional healers, it means that there's a problem with your relatives. So the first question is often, where are your relatives? And that question would often lead to people say, well, you know, I'm a bit at odds with these people and uh, there's a, a family dispute here or there's a disconnection here. And so when people come to see me, sometimes they'll say they'll, they'll present with some kind of a, a malady. Uh, say somebody may come to me and say, I have depression. I've been suffering from depression for a while and uh, nothing seems to work. And then I kind of say, okay, so where are your relatives? And they say, ah, I don't speak to those people. <laughs> it's like, oh, okay, well, uh, this feeling of isolation, which comes with depression and, and uh, those kind of things, uh, are you willing to work with it as a journey of healing to go back through your family and see how you can reforge those connections. And for some people, obviously, that's very, very difficult. You know, to you say, oh, I haven't spoken to my brother in the last 40 years. You know, we've been at terrible odds. Oh, well, 40 years of depression is a long time. Is maybe today the day to change. Um, why don't you see, you know, take the initiative and see. And, you know, sometimes we find miracles with that. And, uh, you know, obviously sometimes not, but sometimes it just takes that with an individual to start the journey of reconnecting with their greater family. And the greater family means with their ancestors, with their family community now, and then also with a sense of who's coming into the future, because it's not just it's not just the ancestors, it's also we're here for our children. And we're here for our grandchildren. And we are ancestors to our children and our grandchildren and our great grandchildren. And what we're doing now we're doing as the ancestors of our great-grandchildren. And if we are selfish, we can make all our decisions and say, well, I, I'm here to, to gain the most out of this world. But if you say, okay, if I, if I make a decision now with my great-grandchildren in mind, uh, what, how, how will it benefit them? And how will it benefit that community? Then you're a real ancestor. And we would hope that our ancestors would be doing that. So we we hope as individuals that we are connected in that way forwards backwards and laterally to all the communities who are around us so i work with individuals like that and when i work with communities i don't work any differently so i, I work in some uh, non-governmental organizations uh, i have some small projects which i'm involved in and basically fundamentally what we do is we work with cultures who formerly had very strong uh, ancestral tradition and now because of modernization some of those things are becoming lost or not practiced so well and we simply work with dialoguing to enable people to reconnect with that way of doing it and for the community to become cohesive so the community who are now living in the community who are in the world the community formerly the ancestors of the community and who is going to be in the community in two or three generations time. And then the greater community of the land that we live in, you know, so the land that we live on has in it all the other creatures and the landscape itself. And we're in community with that. And as soon as we're out of community with that, we start to suffer. We have affliction and sickness. So my work is very simple. <laughs> it's just that it's just to inspire people to reconnect and that doesn't mean that you have to like anybody. It simply means that there shouldn't be a severance with anybody and that we should be back in community with everyone. And so, yeah, in a, in a nutshell, that's my work. Just that reconnection work. Other way, yes. And, and you know, uh, there, there are a lot of people who come to me and they've been taking the pill, you know. So it's not just in North America. We, we have such wonderful medication here as well, you know, that you can obliterate all your problems with. Um, 
but you know, after a while, there are many people who who seek to find a different way to approach their malady or their maladies. And they come and they see me or somebody who does the same work and uh, you can say, okay, well, you know, if uh, you've spoken to your psychiatrist and you're ready to come off of your, your medication, then let's replace it with something. And let's replace it with something which is very, very strong and very cohesive and very deep so that you're not left, left floating somewhere. And, and, and people have done that. And I don't always recommend it. I think sometimes that, uh, you know, um, it can be a precarious business to come off medication. But for some people where we're just numbing a sense of disconnection and we're not doing the work of reconnecting with our community, I think it can be very, very beneficial just to slowly start this work. And then, you know, even come off the pill somewhere in the middle of the work rather than drop the pills and let's get into the work now and uh, let's have a bit of a crisis. I, 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 don't, I don't like crises. I, I think one has to be gentle and step by step with it. And, you know, often our community doesn't want to have us back. You know, and especially in the modern industrial world, you know, we're so used to that uh, that you can disconnect with your family and you can go off and you can make a life somewhere and uh, you can not have a clue who your ancestors were. We we have a way of living with that. And, and it can be that as an individual, you decide, okay, I'm going to start on this journey of reconnecting with my people and my ancestors. And, and, and you look them up and they say, no, we're not interested. We We, we don't want. You know, and, and that's it's a great difficulty and a great sadness. You can't because you are your ancestors. Um, you know, it's taken these all these myriad generations of things coming together to create who we are. Uh, the little habits that are in the family, the cultural habits that are in the family, the national habits which are in the family, um, the values, all of these things, that's what our ancestors are. And so that becomes the field in which we are an entity and you know i think sometimes we would say that a person's energy field is very individualistic individuated but my feeling or my perception of it is it's it's much broader than that and it, it connects a lot with other people especially people who we're related to or people who we're close to um, we share energy fields with people and we share energy fields with a territory or a place where we live, an environment. Uh, and and the, the demarcation between the two is very blurred. It's not, uh, it's not uh, demarcated so strongly. And so it's almost as if we are a consciousness which is moving through energy fields which belong to a greater than actually that we are in ourselves a contained energy field. So that, that's just my perception of it. So I, I work on that level with uh, with people and things and places and trying to perceive the energy fields and see, okay, what what are we moving through here? What is coinciding here? What uh, is colliding here? What's happening? I, I, I think that's a good question. Uh, and I don't, I don't have a good answer, but I, I, I have some speculation on the matter, which I might share. And I, I think it's a matter of our... Um, our willingness to be vulnerable in a certain way. It's a, it's a precarious business also because as you're vulnerable to that kind of energy, you, you start to find yourself less able to function in the industrial world. Um, and you go into a place where there's a lot happening energetically with machines and electronics and people in a big rush. And, and, and you find like, oh, I can't do this. And, and so... It's this balance of trying to have enough of that that one can be perceptive, yet at the same time not be bombarded by it and overwhelmed by it, which happens to a lot of people in, in the work that I do. They are not able to work uh, or, or to operate in the day-to-day -day modern world, which is a great sadness because you know there's, there's great wonder in the day-to-day -day modern world, but at, at the same time, it's very overwhelming for a lot of us who are um sensitive as it is or perceive those kind of energies so so i think i think it's it's as simple as making yourself vulnerable but at the same time balancing it with can you actually then con uh, continue to be functional in the day to day world the sick seek the healer so it might be that instead of the healers going into the technological world to attend to the sick 
so that those, those people who are uh, struggling, as they do anyway, kind of leave that world for a moment and, and, and go to the place where the healers are, which sometimes is in a more peaceful, more natural environment. And even in that, there's a, there's a bit of a healing journey in that, in taking a retreat away from the grinding machine for a while and, and just uh, going to somewhere where it's a lot more natural and a lot slower and a lot less energetically busy. Uh, I'm a big believer in that. And I, I think that our great-grandchildren, wherever they are, when they do a little piece of healing work on themselves, that a healing blessing comes back to us and that uh, we're given a little bit of strength. And in the same way that when we do a piece of healing work around ourselves and our communities, that, that strength, it flows back and forwards through the generations and uh, it, it affects our ancestors in a good way and it affects our descendants in a good way as well.